Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and I am back recording my third video of today. Uh, that is possibly a record for me, uh, doing three Ever Crisis videos in one day, but there's just a lot of stuff going on. And the most recent thing that I was doing was the Leviathan EX co-op battle. And a couple people in my Discord asked if I could record it when I was working through it. It was a lot of fun. I had a couple people from Discord help me out with this, so shout out to them. But uh, yeah, so I did record it, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain what's going on, show the video of our run for anybody uh, who finds this helpful. Now, I will say that uh, you're going to need kind of a specific setup. Now, there's multiple different setups that probably could work, but I'm going to explain what we did, and you can kind of go off that. And if you haven't watched my Leviathan EX1 clear video, probably need to watch that to really understand what's going on with that fight because I don't want to belabor the point here. However, you're going to need a physical DPS or at least some sort of lightning DPS. You're going to need a healer slash support unit and then another utility slash DPS unit. That's at least the strategy that we used. We used Red 13. Red 13 was doing lightning breach and magic attack down because the boff, boss will buff his magic attack. Uh, Cloud was bringing um, Murasame, right? It's an OB9 Murasame, which is pretty good, but it's not OB10, which makes things considerably easier. And so at this point in the game, uh, an OB9 is basically as good as far as damage wise, more or less than an OB6. Um, I was using Matt for heals, right? And magic attack up. And so I'm gonna show you the mat that I used, I can tell you our red did not have um, an OB6 breach. So his breach was only going down by mid potency, not high, which means that, you know, we were doing things on the struggle bus or at least, uh, you know, with a, I guess like a low cost team, right? And this is my mat. So <clears throat> here, my amulet tribute, uh, it's only mid potency. It's not OB6. And this is to counteract the magic defense down that the boss puts on you an aoe heal uh specifically using centipede instead of prime number for this right here because uh the third materia slot for centipede gives a heal boost 20 percent, and you do need a single target heal so if you're the healer you need a single target heal an aoe heal and you need um some way to buff magic defense okay and now preferably a limit you want everybody to bring limits that have the lowest charge speed possible because interrupting him is one of the easiest ways to try to sneak in more sigil breaks and ultimately do a little bit extra damage to this boss. For sub weapons, this is heal and magic defense. This is heal and some um, a buff extension, and this is purely for HP, okay? Another thing with the fight, he will single target attack the person with the lowest HP. So whoever that is, make sure you've got some water resist or a good magic defense, but the lowest HP on the team, right? This is all stuff to be aware of. You also need both triangle and X sigil break. The way we did that is Mirasame has a boost to triangle. Our cloud was our sole triangle breaker. And then both red and I used the X sigil break. Okay. And that was enough to easily get through it, especially with all the cancels. Okay. Uh, here you can just see my general stats and that is what it is. Nothing really fancy about any of this. Okay. This is the only, uh, probably big weapon that I have. And I think I could have adjusted some things to make that down and it would have been just fine. So that's the team setup. Uh, I don't know if there's anything I forgot to cover, but it's kind of hard when I can't see the other players. But like I said, uh, lightning damage, triangle and X and basically cloud or whoever your single target lightning person is, is going to be the person responsible for breaking. Red's going to be, you know, the lightning breacher and uh, Matt's just gonna keep everybody balanced up and healed. And I think Red 13 on our team also brought a heal. So just some things to keep in mind and I will kind of just go through the rest as I walk you through the battle. Okay, for anybody wondering, this is the team. Uh, this is actually what the entire team looked like. And now we're gonna get into the fight. I'm gonna do my best to kind of point out what each and every person's doing. However, um, if, if it gets a little bit hectic, I'm going to resort to probably just showing you or telling you what I was doing. And I'm playing Matt. 
Okay, so the very first stage uh, of this fight is pretty easy. He buffs his lightning resist and he charges this maelstrom gauge. So this is where you want to debuff if you're red, you want to be doing lightning damage if you're cloud, and uh, if you're the healer, basically you want to immediately get ready to buff magic defense after his first AoE move because it takes defense down. Here I'm waiting again just to kind of see what's going on. Uh, here comes the briny bellow. And I noticed that that is always going to be a single target attack. However, because Cloud was also missing some HP, I made the executive decision to do an AoE heal. Here, Sled Fang is used to cancel his next Briny Bellow, because he usually does these in like groups of two or three. I don't know why the screen is shaking on this recording, by the way, so I apologize for that. But if you notice, when he does the Briny Bellow, he also buffs his magic attack. So that's something to also keep in mind, and it'll be something that uh, we do going forward, or, or we take into consideration, I would say. Um, like when we're trying to decide who needs to cancel at what point, or whether we tank one in between. Okay, so he charges up his first move, Tidal Wave. You want to get probably at least one round of magic defense off. You don't have to, but just it's just... There's nothing else really if you're uh, the healer to spend ATB on at this point. So he goes ahead and he hits us with the tidal wave. No problem. And here we're just going to immediately AoE heal back up. Now here, this was just a miscommunic miscommunication. Both Cloud and Red were both... Uh, they both wanted to cancel his next move. Uh, they unfortunately stacked that up, and ideally you would space these out so that you could have canceled that first one and then canceled this Tidal Roar again. After he does the Tidal Roar, he immediately goes into a Sigil Break phase, and that's what you're seeing here. And here, hopefully you got off an AoE heal right off the bat, or your you know, guys are at least pretty topped up. You are not going to focus on any healing at this point. You're just going to be jamming this, uh, or your sigil break, sorry. Now, here, the title roar. I am going to do the very first cancel, and the reason is because I'll have enough time to charge it back up, and mine is going to be very necessary after the sigil break phase. And basically, every time, if you notice, there's like a two or so second delay when he does a tidal roar and gets interrupted. And that's giving you more time to charge ATB, more time to break sigils, etc., etc. And so that is what we're doing during the sigil break phase. It's basically, let's uh, interrupt him and give ourselves as much time to build ATB to kind of get ahead of the game, right? And so we're kind of, it, we allow, <laughs> sorry, it allows us to sneak in some more damage, hit him with some more sigils, and, you know, depending how well you do during this sigil break phase, uh, it can actually give you a pretty significant advantage uh, going into the next portion. But it does take a while, and every time we did it, like I said, we had two X sigil breakers, one triangle, and I believe that the triangle was boosted. Uh, we always came kind of down to the wire here, but you should have plenty of time as long as you don't take time off to like heal anybody or do any of that. You know that you'll be able to heal him or heal everybody once uh, once the break happens and you get the ATB boost. So here, Red's canceling again. And if you notice, I don't know, this is probably like the sixth time we've canceled him, maybe more. And I'm immediately going to start AoE healing, noting that Cloud is even lower than everybody else. So then I'm going to go back. I'm going to toss one single target cure on Cloud. And then I'm just going to start saving ATB. And here is where he's going to go into more single target attacks. There he goes, the Briny Bellow. He hits red. And you can see he buffs his own magic attack when he does it. Uh, this actually was a little bit mistimed. That should have interrupted that Briny Bellow, but it was a little bit late. So that's why that happened and it didn't do the interrupt. Um, we go ahead and heal red back up. And I forgot how much of a delay there is between Briny Bellows. There is quite a big delay. Um, so he hits him again, and you can see again that magic attack going up even further and Red taking even more damage. Here, Red and I got a little bit crossed up and uh, both did the, uh, 
<laughs> we both interrupted at the same time. Now, the reason I was waiting to interrupt is because I wanted to take down that magic buff that he had. Um, you know, like I said, communication is pretty important. But the best part about watching a run that goes through even with a little bit of uh, hiccups is it sh still shows you that, uh, you know, it's possible without absolutely perfect play. Here, I did get the full high-potency defense boost on everybody before this tidal wave, and because we broke that gauge, we're going to be able to survive this here. But you'll notice it hits for considerably more damage. So this time, everybody's taken, you know, 45 to 5,500, immediately get in an AoE heal, and we're just going to go back to doing what we were doing before. One more AoE heal here. And this is another gauge. And this gauge is very important to break. So again here, we're trying to, uh, if you notice there was a, a move being queued up by Leviathan, Cloud decided to cancel that. So it, once again, it basically just resets. So he's got to do more stuff before he's you know done with this uh, portion. And... The reason that matters is because even if it only allows you to get off one extra hit, right, that's that much faster you're going to break that gauge. So this is kind of what we're doing, and uh, I go ahead and buff everybody's magic defense there, and then we are immediately going back into sigils. I feel like everybody has plenty of HP, so I'm not worried about that, but I do know that these sigils have to be broken. Now again, he's going to title Roar. This is where Cloud probably should have canceled there. I feel like that was a little bit of a miss, uh, but ultimately going to be okay. I'm trying to save. If you're using Matt, uh, you probably want to save your cancels only for times when his magic attack is buffed. Unless it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, because the easiest way to die is to get whoever your tank is one-shotted because his magic attack boost gets too high. Alright, this is another cancel here. And by the way, this is one of the reasons that I'm showing you this instead of speeding stuff up. It's just to show you, I guess, like... Kind of the general level of precision and like how much you have to pay attention to beat this fight. Um, also, just because I know that a lot of people in co-ops are used to autoing, but I really do kind of want to show like why that's not an option with this. Maybe unless you have three mega whales, uh, you really have to pay attention and you need to manual this. Here, I'm going to use mine again. Uh, cure up, Briny Bellow comes, I interrupt, and, and the reason I'm doing it now, and I waited, right, you see that his magic attack was up by like three points, and now it's completely gone. Now the only thing I have to worry about is that we have high potency magic debuff on us. Now, red does take a shot, but I get everybody uh, at least, you know, undebuffed to a certain extent and the reason I do that is because I know that the big AoE move is coming up again and so I don't want our party to wipe that's you know kind of the most important thing here comes the tidal wave we have a little bit more time and here I'm gonna prioritize doing the magic defense again uh, if red dies that would not be great but we could re res him uh, but I don't want you know multiple people to uh, to die we are coming into the home stretch here. So, manage to go ahead and get, you know, the magic defense buff up. And here it comes again. Now, this time he's going to do something different than in the normal fight. There is not a third sigil phase. Instead, he will just keep doing, he'll keep charging tidal waves up. So, you really just have to put on the beats as much as possible here. Tidal roar, really good uh, interrupt by cloud here. And I think at this point, I don't know, we're probably up to like 15 interrupts, which you can tell over the course of this battle how those have really allowed us to just build up that much more ATB and get that much more damage in on him. But it takes a you know pretty tremendous amount of coordination from all three people. We were in a voice chat during this uh, because it does make things considerably easier. 
we heal up Cloud, he, we take a little bit of AoE damage, and actually there is, sorry, there is going to be, I think, one more uh, Sigil Break phase, possibly, but I think it comes after the second Tidal Wave. So, basically, you would think that there would be one before this, but there's not. He queues up another Tidal Wave instead, and it might have to do with HP Threshold. I, I can't confirm that, because this is the only time that I've cleared this battle. We take more damage here for sure, but uh, we do survive just barely, and that's going to be enough for us, so we're really happy with that. Here, I, I chose to single target heal Cloud just in case I thought maybe another one of these is coming. I don't know, but the most important thing for me is to, if I can keep Cloud alive, I know he's going to be able to do enough damage to probably finish this even if the rest of us die. So that's why I prioritized him instead of an AoE heal there. Uh, he then interrupts the next ability, Tidal Roar. I go ahead and I actually cast one of my Sigil Breaks uh, X Sigil just to get enough ATB to cancel him again. And I think I did misspeak. I, I don't think there is another Sigil Break phase. I don't know why I said that. He did. He does just do what I said initially, where he keeps just doing the uh, the tidal wave and tidal roars. So once you make it to this point, I mean, it's just pretty much a DPS race, and he's not doing anything that's super terrible, except for a lot of AoEs. But we can keep up with that, and ultimately, we finish him off. That is Leviathan EX co-op version. And like I said... Uh, nobody really had a busted kit. Like, the strongest party member, as far as, you know, OB weapons, was Cloud. And, you know, an OB-9 Mirasame is not that uh, big of a deal by this point in the game. You know, especially if you were, like, a day one player, you've had eight months, nine months to be kind of building these up. And so, I just kind of want to put this out there so that everybody else knows it's doable, but it does take teamwork. You can't just auto it. And, it, you know, it needs to be coordinated. Well, I hope this helped you, uh, or at least gave you some perspective on the co-op battle. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. Thanks for watching.